right, everybody, welcome to the Stogie 411 show. Uh, here with my partner, uh, Mr. Michael Williams. How you doing today, Mike? Yo, yo, I'm doing awesome. Looking forward to today's show to uh, get an opportunity to chat with some of our fine viewers uh, over here on Stogie 411, who we appreciate, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, take some questions. We got some questions that were uh, DM to us uh, from some viewers that couldn't join us today. We're going to try to answer it to the best of our ability. Not that we're any professionals or anything, but uh, we'll do our best. So I want to thank everybody in the chat room for joining us today. We appreciate it. And uh, throughout the show, I'll I'll let you know that I'm going to call you. We'll give you a call, and we appreciate you coming on. We just ask that you, uh, for the most part, keep it clean and respectful. Tom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tom, uh, but uh, other than that, we want to sit back and enjoy the show and uh, have some fun. It's our first time that we're doing the callers. We're giving it a test and uh, see how it goes. So I'm smoking, just so you know. I was smoking the 1502 Emerald, really nice cigar. I really enjoyed it. And now I'm smoking uh, a Headley Grange pre-release. I don't believe it's released yet. John sent it to me. It's called, I'm probably going to butcher it, John, so I'm sorry, but uh, Doble, Dobles, it's a... Uh, six and a half by 50 it's the new size that's going to be coming out in 2013 so uh yeah what are you smoking well, there uh, this, uh from some loser that sent it to me uh, oh wait that was you i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> that was tom <laughs> it's a uh, genesis the i guess it's genesis the project i don't, I don't know or the project genesis the genesis project. is that what it is uh but anyway yeah it's, it's the genesis uh, project ramon Buso, I guess it is. And you said what these yep. are? It's an online yep. thing only, I guess for these. Yeah, it's online only. It's like eighty nine ninety nine in a box. It's relatively inexpensive, but it's it's got some really great flavors, I think, for an inexpensive cigar. Yeah, it's not bad so far. I mean, it uh, starts out a little, little harsher, but uh, it seemed to smooth out right after the first couple yeah. puffs. What's uh what's everybody smoking in the chat? We know that uh, Bill was smoking a lot twenty three earlier. Uh, what's everybody else in smoking? Corey's probably not smoking anything because his wife said he couldn't. Yeah, yeah, Corey. We know my father. All right. Tom is smoking on my father. Corey's locking the freezer, so we know that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, why don't we get to a question? We're gonna we'll get to our first question that was sent in uh, DM to us, and uh, Mango smoking a Nesta Miranda, not for sale stick. Well, aren't you special, buddy? Uh, anyways, let's get to our first question, Mike. We'll both we'll both uh, yep. we'll both answer it and uh, see where we go. But this question comes from Jake uh, in Missouri. Uh, thanks, Jake, for the question. He says, uh, have you guys ever had tobacco bugs? I'm assuming he means tobacco beetles. And uh, if so, how have you handled it? Um, go ahead. I'll take it off. Start it off with nope, you. Never had them. Never had them. <laughs> I've never had them myself either. Uh, but I do know people who have had them. And um, I know what they, what the person who had them done, I know that they, I believe they took all their cigars they uh, stuck them in a deep freezer for about seven to ten days. Uh, put and uh, froze the before cigars. Before they do that, yep. make sure you put them in Ziploc baggies. Don't just put your cigars yes. in the freezer. Right. Good point. Actually, good point. Yes. Put them in a Ziploc bag. Put them in. Um, put them in a deep freeze for seven to ten days. You need to totally clean out your humidor, uh, whether it's a cabinet humidor. Uh, whether it's a cooler or whatever you're using as your humidor, you need to totally clean that out. And then I guess after the seven to 10 days, he took all the cigars out of the deep freeze and put them in his freezer in his house because the, 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 uh, it was totally different freezer temperature wise. And he left them in there for another five days. And then he put them back in his humidor and washed his humidor for, I don't know, a month or so, just to make sure that it didn't rehatch. Yeah. But uh, I've never had them. I'm thankful, but I believe that's probably the best way to uh, get rid of them. As a matter of fact, I believe on uh, uh, Cigar Aficionado, I believe they have a video out there. Uh, I believe Gordon Mott was one. He, he got them. 
And uh, I believe he got rid of them well, similar to that. Yeah. So I would say the, Jake the tried that. I would say also with that, take you know that your deep freezer is colder than your regular freezer normally, and that's why you switch them from the deep freeze to the regular freezer. And don't take them out of the regular freezer and just throw them back in your humidor. Take them from the regular freezer, put them in your refrigerator for another couple days to help the temperature come down even more. Um, you know, it, and any step you can do so that you don't take those cigars out of a real cold environment and put them into a warm environment is going to help. You know, you don't want them to crack or split yeah. or anything else as, as you're moving them around. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, that's the same thing. I, right. you know, I, I saw that video over at a cigar aficionado and it's, uh, basically the, the hardest thing is making sure you get that stuff cleaned out, you know, your humidor and stuff. Well, a lot of people may not know, you know, how you get tobacco beetles, you know, maybe a big part of it is your humidity and your temperature goes way up. Yeah, you know, it's... The bugs hatch. As you far know, as I heard, it was... Chaos it's mostly, starts. You know, if your humidity goes way high, that's when the eggs will hatch. So, you know, I guess right, right. now we're, we're smoking uh, bug eggs, you know, who knows. But <laughs> uh, Now, a lot of the right. manufacturers have have tried to take steps where they actually you know freeze the cigars before they ship them out you know uh i don't know right. how many of them do it i don't know if every every one of them will tell you if they do it or not but that was one of the major steps that they they started taking to try to uh, eliminate you know the the problem for the end user um it, it's yep. a natural product it's you know you got to deal with some of that stuff every now and then no, absolutely. Like Mike said, is, uh, anything above 75 degrees makes it ripe environment. And, uh, yeah, it's true. So, Jake, hopefully we answered your question. Jackie, thanks for joining us. Uh, Jackie also says from Benita Smoke Shop, temperature has a large part to do it, and it's, it's very true. You know, that humidity, you get it up to 80, then, you, you know, it's not the bugs you have to worry about. It's that nice, green, nasty, uh, foamy-looking mold that you get. But uh, we're going to get into that, actually, too. That's another question we have. We'll get into that. But uh, let's uh, let's take a call. Let's. Uh, I believe Tom wants to call. So, Tom, we're going to give you a call. You're going to see that Mike's going to go to the screen of a single shot to him so you don't hear the caller. So everything runs clear. So go ahead, Mike. I'm going to. All righty, everybody. Well, uh, Mike gives Tom a call here. We'll just sit here and chat. And uh, yeah, I agree. I, I was I was wrong on the humidity, I guess. It's more the temperature for the bugs and the humidity is the mold. Um, still working on that, uh, the tar stuff. I know uh, Jerry put up an article about that. And it's Jackie helped me with the, the tar for a while, too. Uh, which I appreciate very, very much, Jackie. Um, all right, looks like we got Tom. And, oh, my God, yes, there's Tom. Wow, that's a scary sight. <laughs> all right, we're back. You got us. We live. It's the hippie. The all right. Yes. All right, Tom. Hey, Tom, what are you doing? You just putting your nipple up to the screen or something? What are you, you doing? I said try Thank to keep you. it clean. So what's up, buddy? How's it going? Chilling, man. Chilling. Good. Thanks for call. Thanks for uh, joining us today. We appreciate it, as always. Let me uh, kill the feed over here. You kill the feed so we don't have feedback. Yeah. Oh, the beetle thing. Yeah. I do have a little article on that. You do? A little process. Just throwing it out there. Okay. Yeah. So go over to... Uh, you got it on your site, Tom? Yeah. All right. Go over to www.tomcigars.com and uh, check out that link on uh, the beetles over there with Tom. Yeah, cheap, cheap plug. Yeah, cool. Well, that's I was, good. I was trying to do the headset thing, but it wasn't working. So I'm, you know, hopefully the audio is all right. Yeah, no, you're good, brother. We hear you fine. So, Tom, you got a, anything you want to add? Questions or anything we can uh, shoot the shit about? What's new? What's new? What's new over at your site? Well, I got to keep it clean. I don't know. You don't have to keep it too clean, but semi clean. How's that? <laughs> uh, Twitter, I will tie right? you down totally. I hate Twitter. Uh, Twitter people. Okay. That's all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll eggs in my smoke, Corey said. <laughs> I won't name names. There you go. Let's not, let's not do that because we're trying to be above them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. I love them all. I don't, but anyways. Uh, I know. Ooh, ooh. Uh, no, 
How's it been going, man? What's the deal? Everything's going good, man. So what's new over at Top Cigars? We know you're not on Twitter much, so it's, we won't get into that. But uh, what's new over your site? You've been banging out the reviews lately. I've been I'm subscribed to it, and I see like twice a week, three times a week. There's a review. Yeah, coming. maybe, maybe two a week. But honestly, there's nothing exciting going on. I got to get together with Ed soon, and you, uh, one of the mics. Yeah. One or both. Yeah, absolutely. Both of the yeah, mics. Cool. Yeah. I'm thinking next should be, uh, night you know night rider mic because uh, we haven't done one. Yeah. Nothing wrong with having a couple of hippies Plus together. Sexier, yeah. So. Unless they're robbing your house. Right. Plus, we just gotta, yeah. <laughs> we just gotta come uh, to an agreement on a smoke. Yeah. Double arrow. Double arrow. Yeah. <laughs> throw it to the chat. Throw it to the chat room. There we go. Yeah, let them decide. Actually, and then we'll just. That's a it. great. That's great. Let the chat room decide what Tom, Ed, and Mike, Mikey F should review, and let's see if Mike man's up. What do you think, Mike? You take the oh, challenge. I take the challenge. I mean. Uh, yeah, I mean, sweet. preferably a good cigar. I mean, we don't want to just review, you know, like a, a, sh a shtick or whatever, like we did with the Stogie Challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we, we could actually review something good, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a good idea. So there you go, yeah. chat room. Throw yeah. out a question. Yeah. Oh, look at Mango's got LFD chisel. <laughs> All right. That, that's I'm what down. I was waiting for. I, I was waiting for those. <laughs> Airbender, 6 by 60 I'm down, I'm down, man. I'm down. <laughs> I'll do that one. Even though we reviewed it before with Mike, we could get a third opinion. Uh, Pinolero. You know, I haven't tried that, and I'm hearing great things about it. Either one of you guys tried that by AJ? Nope, not me. Mm -mm. No. I don't think so. Yeah, I've been hearing nothing but good things about that, uh, Corey. Have you tried it, Corey? I I've been hearing good things about it. Mike's opinion is puke. <laughs> <laughs> 20 yeah. bucks at Mike last <laughs> So uh, yeah, anything anything else, Tom? Anything you want to oh, add? And we're gonna get back chilling. to the show and questions. I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling. It's good. all good. Good, man. That's I'm good to hear. Clean. I'm keeping it clean. Atta boy. Well, we appreciate it, man. And listen, hey, so no bullshit. We appreciate you. You're here pretty much every Saturday, and it really means a lot to us. No shit. Definitely. We appreciate it, brother. It's all good. good all right. Time. Well, we're gonna kick it back, Mike. If you want to go back to the single, and Tom, we'll be talking to you. Hope you stay in the chat room and uh, continue. Good times. www.tomcigars.com. Check out his article on the bugs and also I'll, check him out, man, his reviews. I'll put a link up for the uh, little All right. article thing. That way people don't have to search and blah, blah, cool. blah. Okay, cool. Appreciate it. Well, you want them to go over to your site too, man. So Yeah. All right. Thanks, brother, right. man. We appreciate it. See you. See you. Later. Later. All righty. Now, Mike, you're still with us here. It's a, it's a little off, but uh, we're, we're good to go okay. now. Good. Um. All right. Yeah, it was, it was nice for uh, Tom to come on there. Tom's a great, great viewer and has a real great site over there. I've been, you know, going to Tom's site for years. Yep, I agree with you. Tom was one of the guys like Mikey who helped me out when I first started out three years ago with Mike Stogie. So, yeah, he's good people. Good egg. Uh, tells you how it is. Yeah. I kind of like that. Uh, Anyway, question. Yeah, all right. Actually, I'm going to get the question for you. Uh, question for uh, Mike from Pete in New York. He wants to know, why does Mike in PA always look like he's cold during the show? Well, that's because I am cold usually during the show, <laughs> at least now. Um, I'm in Pennsylvania, and I'm down in my basement, and I have a window that I can touch right next to me here. I don't know if I could take the – yeah, I mean, we're just doing a – show I, I, I can you can do whatever you want to do man here. take them so take them for a little here's, tour here's my window that that i have <laughs> over you can see how close it is see my nasty basement walls and everything um so yeah that's uh that's a reason i mean i have let me kind of turn yeah you can see my my heater back there that i have now to try to keep a little warm because i i have no room in front of me to put it um, did we ever show him the show? I should give him a view what? of the the whole thing I have here. But uh, go ahead. Yeah, that's that's the main reason. Oops, I might not be able to hold on. You might get seasick. You're all gonna get sick. That's all right. If Corey does, that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> why is Mikey looking up? He's gonna show you why he's looking up, Joe. Yeah, I have laptops and tablets and. 
Then over with all the junk down here. Look at my basement. Look at that. Just replaced that hot water heater. See it back there? That's the new hot water heater. Aren't you impressed? And Sorry, there's the computer. <laughs> That's the show. That's how we get this out to you every every week. <laughs> Corey, Corey's like ripping you Corey's up, buddy. Dick. It's all right. Yeah. Hey, uh, Joe, whose volume was low? Mine or uh, the other mics? Because you just said Mike, and we're both Mike. Whose volume's low? I'm assuming you're probably going to say mine. I just turned it up so. Sparkles, he says your volume's low. My volume's low. That's what he said. Huh. Well, while Mike's looking at that, does anybody in the chat room have a question uh, that you want to ask us? Or uh, maybe we can give you an honest uh, answer on something. Other before we take, uh, we're going to wait a couple minutes and then I'm going to call in. Uh, I'm going to call in Bill Delaney next. So, Bill, get yourself ready. I'll be calling you shortly. Your go-to smoke. Oh, man. Uh, I want to say, I'll answer that, Corey. I want to say my go-to smoke would be an Epernay, but they're so expensive. I don't smoke them all the time. I kind of save them. I will tell you right now, my go-to smoke right now, uh, besides the Headley Grange, and I'm probably going to butcher this name, is that La Altier, the Lot 54. That is, I, I'm smoking the crap out of that cigar right now. Love it. I think it's the sleeper cigar of the year I, you know not a lot of people were talking about it and uh definitely i told you Corey, it's definitely a cigar you should seek out man. all right let's uh how's my volume now I'll, I'll do this for for joe i turned mine up a little bit to see if that helps joe says he's old how do i know there's a good question mike well, Bill's well, got well a no. question. What, what did they ask so, about the Oh, yeah, he wants to know, Corey wants to know your go-to cigar. Oh, go-to cigar. Uh, right now, it's been the... Uh, Devil's uh, Weed. <laughs> uh, no, the uh, Emilio Cigar Suave. Um, I mean, I absolutely love that smoke. I actually bought a box of them when I was over uh, doing my shop review. And uh, I just, it, it's great for me. It's a, it's a milder smoke. You know, it's mild, medium smoke. And it it's good morning afternoon evening any time of the day for me so i mean i smoked two of them right in yeah. a row when i uh interviewed steven over there so it's i, I really yeah. and it's not it's not super expensive either you know because i'm a cheap bastard screw y'all <laughs> <laughs> everybody yeah. knows that one right uh yeah let's see bill's got a question why does there appear to be so much infighting between bloggers hear a lot of website talking shit about others um well i mean i i can't tell you why there's there seems to be a lot of fighting i think personally there's a lot of egos um i think we forget sometimes that Every blogger out there, whether you agree or disagree, I think every one of them has a job outside of this. And it's not like any of us are getting rich. And whether you're the first or you're the last blogging site to start, um, you know, we all work hard to try to give everybody an honest opinion. And really, that's all it is in my it's just an opinion. None of us are right. None of us are wrong, despite what some of these sites believe um and i just think a lot of it's a lot to do with egos because the reality is you know let's be honest i mean twitter and facebook and blogging has really you know it has helped the industry i believe but the industry was strong before twitter facebook and blogging started so i just think some people need to get put back into place reality check that you know it's not all about them let's just make it about the cigars and you know, if you don't like something, you don't like it. But if someone disagrees with you, it doesn't mean that you're right and that person's wrong. So I, I don't know the answer, Bill, why it seems to be that way. But I agree with you. I know uh, I know personally I've dealt with it. Uh, you know, some people have said some negative things about what we do here as of recent. And, uh, you know, that's okay. They're entitled to their opinion, but I think, you know, you really shouldn't throw stuff like that out there on Twitter or on Facebook. If you feel that way, keep it to yourself because everybody's working hard to try to 
give everybody a little insight. So that's my two cents, Bill. Mike, you got anything yeah, I mean, you want to add to it? I agree. And, you know, the thing you, you really got to look at, like you said, and it was a good point where the cigar industry was doing good before bloggers came along. The cigar industry yep. will still go, do good if every single blogger or every single site goes away. The only difference will be yep. they will be doing it a lot slower than what they can with the bloggers. You know, that, that's the biggest right. thing with the bloggers right now is, you know, you have a print magazine. Everybody loves print magazine. Yet it's going to take you two months, three months, whatever, to get into that magazine. You know, bloggers, right. the minute a cigar comes out, boom, right there it is. You know, you can have it on the screen. You can have a review of it. You can have people looking at the band, the box, tell them exactly when it's going to be out, you know, before it hits the store shelves. A lot of times with the, with the other media, you know, with the print media, it takes longer where the cigars are probably on the shelf before they even have a chance to get it into, uh, you know, the magazine or the or whatever brochure that they, they do, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's just one of those things. It's like it, some bloggers don't like the way other bloggers do things, so they point it out. You know, some bloggers are, are new and they yep. come in and they just think they're – their god to the industry and it's like you know you have to realize that like you said old or new uh, the industry is there you are not the industry you know right yeah and that, it's it's, it's, it's definitely true you know yeah i think matt's got it right too it's an opinion and an investment that doesn't pay off and it's true and you know and Corey's right too if you don't like a certain blogger don't go to their site I, there's sites i don't go to because i just don't agree with the way those people are handling the things they're saying. So I hope that answered your question, Bill. We don't want to hang on that question too long. Uh, well, he's got, I just thought the cigar smoking isn't the biggest community. Many people do not like cigar smokers, just like cigarette smokers figured it would stick together. Yeah, you would think it would, Bill. You know, I, I said a little earlier in the show when Tom came on, you know, there were a few people who who uh, helped me out in the beginning. Uh, Dave over the Cigar Nut Mike helped me out and Tom were really the three people when I started out, man, that Christ, I, I, I didn't know how to start this, this out. And, uh, you know, those guys have always been there for me. I could ask them anything. And to me, that's what it's like. And if anybody asks me anything, I give my honest opinion. I don't have all the damn answers to everything. You know what I mean? And I don't think any blog site really does, but that's it. Let's get off of that topic, Bill. So, Bill, anyways, I'm going to give you a call right oh. now. So hopefully that wasn't your only question because we're going to give you a call right now. So let's get Bill Delaney on the on the Skype call. Mike, if you want to click over. All righty. Just me again. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a community of cigar smokers. It seems like you have more community spirit in your local cigar shops than you do in the blogosphere, really. It, it's kind of crazy, but... You know, what can you do? It's just one of those things where after some time, I'm hoping everybody comes together and, you know, the the stuff that's bad that's out there goes away and the good stuff comes in. We're getting ready here for uh, Bill to come in. And there is... We're waiting on Mikey. And here we go. Hey, Bill, how you doing, brother? And he's got his Yankee hat sporting. I think he wore it on purpose. Son of a gun. How's it going, buddy? Good, guys. How are you? It's going great, man. Thanks for joining us. First time we, uh, first time trying this, having the callers call in instead of us trying to read all the questions all the time. But, hey, that was a great question, man. Uh, hopefully we could answer it the best we could. It's kind of a... It's kind of a difficult question to really ask. I mean, to answer really, you know, we can't tell you why people feel the way they feel, but uh, yeah, you think everybody would get together, you know? All right. But it, it just doesn't happen, man, and it's unfortunate. And I don't think it'll ever change. It'll just be the way it is. So, uh, what are you smoking right now? I got the lot twenty three right now. Still smoking it. Nice. How you How you liking it? I, I, it's a staple. I always keep it on hand. Yeah, cool. It was one of the first guys I really uh, clicked with. Oh, and you're smoking yeah. in your house. Nice. Uh, yeah, well, it's actually my son porch. My fiance kicked me out of the house, so I'm back. <laughs> I, I was going to say, but you're not married, are you? <laughs> 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 but he's smart. He wants to keep her as a fiance, so he's doing what she said. And it keeps her quiet. I stay out here after here, so. There you go. Well, Bill, do you have a question that besides the one you just asked that maybe we can help with or give our opinion on it? Because that's all it is. 
Yeah, one of the questions I was thinking is I see uh, looks like a difference of opinion. What do you think the cigar industry, the companies, feel about the bloggers? Because I've seen it split 50-50 when you see different oh, things. Wow, yeah. that's another. I'm going to throw it to you first, yeah, Mike. Yeah, I, I agree. It is, there is a split, and it seems, if you watch it, there's it seems like more of the old-timers in the industry don't respect the bloggers as much. And I think a lot of that has to do with uh, you know, there's more and more sites coming out where they don't put a number to a cigar. And every manufacturer loves to see a number with a cigar because they can advertise. They can say, oh, look what number we got. You know, and if they get a too low of a number, then they just don't advertise them. You know, they only advertise the high ones. And it's harder for them to take anything from the, the bloggers in that aspect, you know, in order to use for their own promotional material. Um, and the other, you know, the other side of the coin is they just don't understand it. You know, they don't, they've never done, you know, with the internet, the Twitter, the Facebooks, they haven't done any of it. They've always done the old fashioned, you know, the print media, sending out the, the uh, packets to the, uh, to your local shops and everything, you know, with the reps and everything like that. So it's, uh, but the ones that do like the bloggers seem to really love the bloggers and they, they get it where the bloggers can get everything out quicker than anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually, Mike, this is pretty, pretty, pretty well said. What I was gonna Copycat. was gonna say, but I, I, I'll, add, I, yeah, I know, I gotta agree with you. I don't want to, but I'll, uh, I'll add this. I, I think also, Bill, it, it's uh, these guys, these manufacturers, these people making the cigars. They put their heart and soul into a cigar, and 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 we can be here and be honest. You know, not every cigar is gonna please. Mike Williams is going to please Bill Delaney. He's going to please Mike for you. It's not going to happen, okay? You're going to come out with a cigar, and six people are going to like it. Six people probably aren't. And I think the toughest thing is, is two, is one, it's very tough to take some ne negative criticism. It, it's hard. As humans, we, we, we like to be rewarded. We like to be told that everything we do is good, right? We want to hear good things from our parents. We want our wife, you know, our kids want to hear good things. So when someone gives you a bad review or, uh, you know, or goes on to one of these social medias and says, oh, you know, that cigar just, I didn't like it. It didn't have this, didn't have that. It, it, it tends, I think, why some of them don't like bloggers, it tends to put, because a lot of people go to these blog sites and a lot of people take value from the bloggers and they're like, wow, if he doesn't like it, why the hell am I even going to go out and try it, right? So a blogger could really, in a sense, can hurt a cigar or can help a cigar. So I think that's another reason why maybe some of these manufacturers don't, don't like bloggers and maybe some of them do because they understand not everybody's going to like your cigar but i mean that's that's my two cents on it you know i think everybody whether you like the cigar or not being a blogger just everybody who watches any blog site including mine or any other one just remember it's just an opinion take go smoke the cigar too and see what you think of it because you may like it you know and just just keep that in mind that's the only thing i could tell well, you as a, a blogger and, uh, jackie brought up something here real good in the in the chat and this has to go with the blogger situation too said about you know most of the companies appreciate to talk about the cigars they don't like the ones who hit them up for you know the freebies and get told or else we will write bad things about your cigar you know you, you right, can't right you just can't do that with the manufacturer you don't you don't ask for freebies if they're willing to give you a sample to try great you know that that's their prerogative they don't have to do this and that's where some of the manufacturers right. i think almost feel compelled that every every blogger out there is going to react the same way where you have to give 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 you know or we're going to just right. screw you well, that seems counterproductive to the whole trying to get cigar companies to like you by telling you if you don't do it it's counterproductive exactly right yeah it's it's, it's true bill and it, and it happens probably more so than people realize you know right. But yeah, that's that's. I mean, that's our two right. cents and on well, it. You know, we'd have to we'd have to get a manufacturer on right. who disagree. You know, who says that they don't like bloggers? Then maybe we could get an answer from one of them. But uh, you know, fortunately for us, everybody we've had on the show, you know, has been pretty open to bloggers. Or you probably wouldn't come on the show, right? Yeah, so, I think you know, so. Yeah. Slit you know, wrote but, something uh, too. He's he brought up a good point. You know about the bloggers and the boutique stuff coming on about the same time. You know, the, the bloggers have been around for years, but, you know, with the boutique stuff coming out, they you kind of melted together because the little guys wanted the exposure. 
you know, and the big yep. guys were like, yep. eh, we don't really need it. You know, we're making X amount of dollars already. What are you going to do for us? You know, and I think as right. as more and more time goes on, because the blogging world is really still pretty uh, in the infantile stage, I would say. You know, as time goes on, I think they're going to realize more and more, and, and more and more people are going to embrace the, the blogging world. As long as we can get rid of those, the trash ones that, you know, or, and that would be yeah. the manufacturers just ignore or the, or the overinflated egos. You know. We'll get rid of those, and then everything will be better but so yeah anything else bill you want to ask or we'll uh throw it forward no i'm just gonna stroke your balls a little bit you guys do a great job (laughs) hang on (laughs) let me adjust all right go ahead (laughs) (laughs) now you guys do a great job you guys were the first ones that i really caught on to when i got to the whole cigar thing a couple years ago and started reading everything so keep doing what you're doing guys you guys do a great job thanks man that that really means a lot man uh coming from a viewer it means a lot to us because we always I think we pride ourselves on saying, you know, without our viewers, we're, our show's nothing. There'd be no show. Yeah. There really wouldn't be, you know. So it means a lot, man. We're humbled by it, and yes. we thank you. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, Bill. Talk to you soon. See ya. All righty. So now uh, we'll go back to Mike and I here. Bill's a great guy. Have to have to try to meet up with Bill one of these days and smoke a cigar or something. Yeah. Absolutely. And thanks so much, Bill, for the kind words. And uh, thanks. Hopefully you'll stay in the chat room. We will take questions from the chat room. Again, we're just giving you our, our, our some of our honest opinions and uh, we're just trying to make it a fun show. It's basically a beta test show, really, to uh, doing this new thing. We're trying to uh, incorporate uh, you, the viewers, calling into our show and uh, taking your questions live. So we're trying something different and hopefully it seems to be working OK. Um, take another one of those questions off your list there. But- Oh, yeah. I forgot. Yeah. we got questions on my desk. Okay, next question comes from... Uh, let's take Bob from PA. Why do cigars crack and how do you fix them? Um, don't throw them at your kids. Uh, that'll crack them. No, I'm just being a jerk. Uh, why do they crack? Man, there's lots of reasons why they crack. Shipping. Uh, I know in the, in the humidor sometimes. I know in you know, fluctuation of temperature. And uh, humidity can cause the cigars to crack. Um, if you're getting them from a B and M, you know you got to remember a lot of people are probably handling those cigars, uh, so they crack. Um, I know fix them, fixing them. I really never do try to fix them. Usually you can smoke through it, depending on how bad the crack is or where the crack on the cigar is. Um, but I know you can get some uh, fruit pectin, and uh, that will fix it. And I know there's some places that actually sell. They're called cigar repair kits. It looks like a little tiny vial of, it looks like nail polish, but obviously it's not. And you could just brush yeah. it on. So what, what, yeah, what do you uh, think, Mike? Why do they crack? There's, uh, there's little things you're talking about. That That's the same thing that they use, you know, like to put the cap and to wrap the cigar and everything like that. Uh, I Here personally, I actually got some pectin at the store and keep on hand in the refrigerator. And, you know, if it's not cracked real bad, you can usually smoke through it. It'll, it'll usually be okay. Mm-hmm. But if it's cracked, I mean, a good distance or you have a chunk out of it or whatever, the easiest thing to do is take a cigar that you don't want, you don't like or whatever, take a piece of the wrapper off, put pectin on it, and just cover it. Cover where that is. Um, you know, let it go. Just yep. not. It doesn't take real long for that pectin to dry enough where you can smoke it. And then you'll be able to smoke your cigar. The only difference will be is depending on what wrapper you use you may get a little bit of a difference in taste just because that bitter you know it depends how much wrapper um now christine you know over at uh, your site now she rewraps entire cigars and she would be a real good one to let people know you know what she uses to actually put them put them on i don't know why she's not in the the chat room today the slot Actually, if you go over to the lovely lady of the stick to her website, don't go to Mike Stogie's because she doesn't do it there. She does it over at her site, lovely lady of the stick. And uh, she actually goes into how she rewraps these cigars, and uh, she'd probably be better to answer that. So uh, definitely uh, check that out. And uh, one thing, uh, Joe, you asked earlier, why do we look up at our oh, – yeah. look, looks like we're looking up because I know Mike has a monitor above him where – he watches the wirecast part of the show and i look up because i have a monitor up here where i watch the chat room so that's why we're always 
We're always yeah, looking up, uh, just with, so you know. With limited space, it, it's it's hard to have everything, you know. I, I can't have, like, a setup here that I would have three or four monitors, you know, right in a row that I could keep. Um, well, anyway, once, once we can sell this house and get out of it and get another house, then I will. You know, I'll be able to keep everything level and hopefully be all right but i, I got to keep an eye and make sure that the feed and everything is still going okay um oh and i wanted to say uh jackie she said yes you know with a pectin water mixed with toothpick and dab on they actually have and what i got it's already pre-done pectin it's in pouches yeah. just snip the end and yeah. squirt mm-hmm. a little bit on you don't even have to worry about mixing anything yeah. or doing anything like that and you don't use much i mean yeah. don't don't you know, slobber this thing with the stuff, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah, you just need a little bit, a little yeah. bit goes far. You don't yeah, need you know, a lot. Mike, Mike's wife yeah. tells him that all the time to make him feel better. <laughs> easy, easy, <laughs> easy. Come on now. Yes. Canning so. section in most stores. Yep. That's exactly where you yep. find it. That's exactly yep. where I found mine. All right. Let's see. Let's take uh let's take another question here uh, from Bill in Australia. Bill, thanks for uh, listening to us in Australia. We appreciate it. Uh, is it really necessary to use distilled water in a humidor? Oh, my think, God. Guy? Yes. Now, I will divert on that a little bit. Let's say if you have a filtration system in your house that's going to take all the impurities out of the water then you're okay you know reverse osmosis you you know something like that you're okay most tap water that you have now i'm not sure how it is in australia i've never been there but most tap water is just all kinds of stuff in it um you know we have i I think ours has like uh, calcium chloride in it because of the the pipes coming into because we're in an older town you know we have lead pipes coming in and they have to coat the pipes or the water pressure would actually start expanding and and cracking the pipes so they put this calcium chloride in well it makes like a white chalky substance you know like on our fish tank we have it you know all over the back of it because of filling the fish tank with the with tap water and you definitely do not want that in with your cigars so yes you you definitely want to use distilled water Uh, and again i don't know how it is in australia here it's dirt cheap you know in in the states it's you know what, like 50 cents a gallon, dollar a gallon at the most, or something like that? Yeah, like 99 and that stuff cents. Last few eons. Yeah. A long time. Yeah, I agree. I agree with Mike. Definitely use distilled water uh, unless you do have a reverse osmosis. I know in my, I just built a walk in humidor and uh, I have an RO system in the back of the wall where the water lines feed in the humidifier. And uh, that's probably. In my opinion, probably the absolute oh, best. And yes, and but along the, with that, now I said about the one shop around here before. If you go into your shop and you notice cigars that are like out of the cellophane mostly, that have like a white film on them, sometimes that is actually from them using water that's not filtered, and it'll get that coating after. It, it takes a little while, you know, but it it'll actually get that coating right. on the cigars. That's what that's from. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. Just thought. Of, no, that's okay. No, that's okay. Yeah. So yeah. So hopefully we answered your question when you watch the uh, if you're watching the live feed or uh, Bill when you uh, watch the video afterwards. Hopefully we answered your uh, your question. Corey, uh, that only works in certain let's instances see. with boiling the water. He said about just, what's that? Just, you got to remember. People. Corey said about just boil water on the stove, and that will um, work on certain types of chemicals that are in your water, but it will not work with everything. I know I've heard people say that they double boil, you know, uh, like if, if you've ever seen somebody who has perfectly clear ice cubes, they usually double boil the water, you know, boil it, let it cool and then boil it again yeah. and then put it in your ice cube trays or whatever to freeze to get perfectly clear ice cubes. There's, there's just some impurities that do not all come out. So you're, you're a lot better just going with the distilled. Plus it probably costs more in electric or gas to boil the water than would just to buy a gallon of distilled water, you know? <laughs> yeah, it depends on depends on where you live. Well, Corey, listen, since you're on the topic, buddy, we are going to give you a call. So uh, get ready. I'm going to give you a call now, Mike. If- all right, everybody. You know what's great about this? Corey's been mean to me all show, so I can just not switch back. You know, I, I, I could just be a prick. <laughs> I won't do that to Corey, though. 
So if you have any questions in the chat room, I mean, ask away. We're more than willing to answer them the best that we can. And if we don't know the answer to the question, we can always look it up and get it afterwards. Oh, oh, Corey's coming on. Oh, no. No, all right, all right. Now, Corey, I I'm going to let everybody know right now before I switch over. Corey has an Eagles hat on. Now, I'm going to see if I can cut that off in the video because, oh, God, the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> All there right. you are. Corey, welcome to the show, my man. What's going on, guys? How are you? We're doing great sporting that Eagles hat and that. But show that box of cigars. Show that winning again. Merry Christmas. There you go. Show the winning. Show that box. Look at them. Here's the winnings right here. You rotten bastards. Here's the money. <laughs> Where's the money? <laughs> That's right. Uh, I'm going to get even, though. <laughs> uh, so, Corey, what's going on? How are we doing? Everybody having a good time? We're having a ball, man. Thanks so much for taking time out and joining us. You there? Oh, Corey lost his microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that. What was that? I said thanks for taking the time out to join us. Can you hear us? I'm all screwed up over here. Uh-oh. Did you hit the speaker button? This is a first-timer for me. He's Can you hear us? Did I hit the who? Can you hear us? Do I have to log off the porn first? <laughs> no, I'm I'm still on, so it's all right. <laughs> What's going on? I don't think he can hear me. I am technically challenged for sure. <laughs> I can see Mike, all right, Mike F. You can't see me. You you can't see Mike Williams. Oh my God, am I just a frozen screen with no, no, hat on? You're, you're live. We we can see you. Well, go ahead, Mike. Talk to yeah, him. I can he can't hear me. Can we see you guys. It, it's the audio that's not coming through. Huh. All right. Go to the chat. Tell them to go to the chat room. We call, we'll call you back. We'll call you back. do a show song for you. Go <laughs> <laughs> Corey, right. go to the chat room. We'll call you back. All right. Oh. Hold on. That was too quick. All right. There I am. Clear. <laughs> <laughs> He's special. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's that damn hat. I agree, Mango, buddy. Freaking Eagles. <laughs> All right, Corey. We'll call you back, man. Just uh, fix your audio. You couldn't hear us. I don't know what happened, right. but that was hilarious. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's take one more. I think we got one more question, Mikey, here. Let's uh, let's see. Uh Okay, this is a good question, actually, I think. Um, Rick in Florida wants to know, uh, can a person's palate change, and what flavor should I look for in a cigar? Now, that's a uh, that's a hell of a question, right? Uh, you want to start, or you want me to take Don't it? Don't matter. Start. You pick. All right. All right, I'll start. Uh, can a person's palate change? Yes, I believe it can. Uh, I'll equate it to food. I mean, you know, there was a time... I. I didn't like certain food, and uh, now I do. So I, I guess eating more of it, I tend to like it. As far as your palate and what you should look for, I mean, just when you're sitting back smoking a cigar, in my opinion, it's it's kind of like a time just to free your mind of everything and just relax and just focus on the, the cigar itself. And when, you know, I, I learned one thing from, from Ed over at St. Pete Cigar. The way you inhale the smoke into your mouth and the way you exhale through your nasal passages and through your your mouth can change some of the flavors that you pick up on a certain cigar um i found sometimes blowing the smoke out slower i would pick up some little nuances in the background that i may not have picked up before i think as you smoke the longer you smoke in years the better your palate will develop um but just you should get some of the uh some of the, you know, the, maybe the woody notes, you know, some of the, you know, like cedar notes, you should get some leather notes. Those are the kind of notes you should be picking up in a cigar. Um, so I would just sit back, relax, let the smoke out slow, let it out through your nasal pass. If you're not retrohaling, you're definitely yeah. going to miss some some flavors for sure. Um, but yeah, your palate will develop over time and you'll start picking up more things. And if you don't pick up something that somebody else is picking up, don't think you don't know what the hell you're doing because that's not true. Not everybody's palate is the same. It's almost like a, a fingerprint. No two people's palates will probably be the same. 
you know, Mike may pick up something that I never pick up. I may pick up something that he doesn't. So uh, I would say just sit back, relax, and en- enjoy the cigar, and you'll get there. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, you know, it, it's one of those things where your palate may never develop to the point of some people out there. You know, it, it's just it's one of those things. Now, as you go along and, and the more years you smoke, you're going to be able to pick up the little nuances a lot better because you're going to get used yeah. to them. You know, you're going to always have your 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 profile right there or your upfront flavors, you know, from a cigar. And normally they won't change a whole lot. Um, but, yeah, as, as you go on with smoking, uh, like in the in the chat room here, uh, Slid Zero said, you know, he went to full-bodied stuff and now he's looking for a more well-balanced mid-to-full stick, you know, rather than something that's just super strong. You know, and... Yep. It, it, and it's a constant thing. It's it's nothing where you're going to notice, okay, today I'm going to smoke, you know, Connecticut's and a year from now, then I'm going to smoke Sumatra and a year from now I'm going to smoke Maduro. And, you know, it, it, it's nothing like that. You're going to intermingle things. You're going to find different times of the day where you enjoy different cigars. And it, it's just going to be a whole experience for you as you take the journey, basically, through your cigar smoking experience. Um, you know, and, and the other thing is, like, you know, some of the things I have a hard time picking up in cigars are, like, certain spices. And it's because I don't use spice. I, don't, I do not cook with spice. I don't like spice in my cooking. I want to yeah. take, you know, if I make a steak, I want to taste the steak. I don't want to taste the spice. So I don't have right. the uh, experience with that sort of thing in order to pick up, you know, individual, oh, well, here's nutmeg, here's, you know, this and that and the other thing. So, like I said, it, and like right. Mike said, you know, it goes with foods you eat and things like that. And you'll you'll start to uh, yep. compare it. You'll, you'll get a taste and you'll be like, oh, well, that tastes like this. Yep. You know, I, I know I did a, a Fuente, the Between the Lines. And to me, I got flat out that toasted chocolate covered marshmallow i mean that's exactly what it tastes like like a toasted marshmallow with chocolate on it and that's not something that everybody would get you know it's like i get a lot of these and and these red hot candies i used to eat a lot of them when i was a kid they're basically cinnamon now i could just say cinnamon but to me it reminds me of that candy and a lot of times you'll see well it you may get cinnamon, I may get red hot. It's still the same thing. It's it's that red hot cinnamon taste. It's that zing from the, I get a lot from Nicaraguan tobacco. It's that zing and that's where I get it. So again, like Jackie said and Matt too, it has a lot to do with what you eat. It has a lot to do with what you're drinking and even what you're pairing the cigar with. If you're, uh, you know, pairing it with a certain libation, you know, that may, may affect what your palate, what you're, you're tasting. So, yeah. uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we answered your question there. And Corey, <clears throat> don't worry about it. Your son woke up. We understand. We'll try it again because we're going to keep doing these uh, these shows. But we do appreciate you uh, calling in. So yeah, uh, and Joe, thanks. Anybody got any questions Joe, in the Joe chat said, room? said like what you said too. You know, certain bourbons and rums and and things will will enhance the flavor, you know, of a cigar when you smoke it. I'm um, whoops, where am I at? Which camera? There I am. Right? No, wrong one. That one. No. Oh. The other camera, they can't uh, see what you're smoking. That's a great Lithuania. stick, too, yeah. by the way. Yeah, it's really a good stick. Um, coffee, yes, definitely coffee. Uh, Tom, Tom, you guys can do a review whenever. We said the uh, chat room, they threw out some ideas, so you guys got to decide. Mike said he will smoke whatever the chat room decides on uh, to to review. I'm smoking, I don't know if you guys joined us late, I'm smoking the uh, pre-release Headley Grains to Doblis. Uh, six and a, what did I say? Six and an eight by fifty. It's not out yet. Uh, John was nice enough to send this to me, and uh, it's killer. It's uh, really good. <clears throat> so, uh, anybody got any questions? Uh, we're gonna probably go for about another ten minutes. I got all the questions asked that were sent in, Mike. Cool. So, uh, if anybody has anything else, we'd be happy to well, and add it. You know, the other thing to go along with the flavors of a cigar. Try different libations. You know, with a cigar. You know, smoke a cigar and have, like, I'm, I'm drinking a Woodford Reserve right here. You know, try some whiskey, try some bourbon, try some rum, you know, try coffee, try water. 
you know, try different things and see what fits your yeah. Just try you know, nothing. What fits your profile the best? Because not everybody is going to say, you know, oh, I can I can drink a real oaky, you know, whiskey along with a cigar and pick yep. up more than just wood yep. out of it. You know, it, yeah. Yeah, Joe, I agree with you, man. Had the grain. Oh, everybody, if you follow me, you know, I think it's the scar of the year. I think it's killer, but it's a great stick. Woodford. Yeah, I got some Woodford. Mike's mo- drinking yep. Woodford right now, aren't you, Mikey? Yeah, that a boy. Well, see, see, right there. Good thing. Let's see Almost all dark too, chocolate bar and a cigar. Awesome. Look at Jackie. She's got all, she's got the chocolate down to just uh, just the name. She's specific <laughs> chocolate. She's not eating anything else. Jackie, when are we going to yeah, get you yeah. on the show, dear? We've been trying to get you on the show. Now we got you in the chat room. We're going to put you on the uh, hot stove. When are you going to join us, Jackie? Straight boiled dinners for me. <laughs> you know? I, she said try it. <laughs> I, you know, I, I could live off of TV dinners. I am not picky. <laughs> I agree, Tom. Jackie needs to be a guest. You're you're 100% right. Well, let me let me throw this out to the chat room. I'll, I'll do this. Is there anything in the chat room, is there anything you guys would like to see us incorporate into the show? Or is there a certain manufacturer or anybody else that you would like to see on this show? Oh my God, Oreos! Yes, Jackie, Oreos. I could definitely live off Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Corey. You're here now. We appreciate it, brother. How do you guys come up with this idea for the show? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Ah, oh, wow. Um, <laughs> you did well, Mike and I. You did. I did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Uh, Mike and I, uh, like I said, Mike's helped me out from the get-go and we became uh really good friends and uh we used to skype all the time smoke a cigar and hang out and um i said to him one night we were talking i said you know i think there's something missing what can we do different you know we both we, we both review on on different sites i said what can we do different that really nobody's doing now there's there's kiss my ass radio out there and they're doing something there's some other, uh, you know, uh, dog watch cigar radio, and they're doing something kind of similar to what what we're doing. But uh, I said, what can we do different, you know, that nobody else is doing that we can make our own and and maybe get somewhere where viewers, people who are enjoying cigars, who can't always get to, you know, like the like uh, the big smoke or they can't get to cigar fest, where they can actually ask these manufacturers their questions and have it answered in. We tossed the ideas around, threw it back and forth, came up with this show, and then we realized that, you know, we uh, we needed somebody to take care of the site and all the background stuff, and that's when we brought Matt aboard, and Matt was happy to come on, and uh, that's pretty much how we started. So we just threw an idea around for a while, and uh, it's been going ever since. Slid, that was my idea, and I keep getting shot down every single time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, would you rather watch us or would you rather watch strippers in the background smoking a cigar? <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to watch us. Oh, and uh, Bill, yes, we did get Jose Blanco back. Thanks for asking. He's coming back December 15th, so we will have him back. That was one of the great, great shows. I mean, uh, I-, I would say so far and everybody that we interviewed, Jose and Rocky Patel were probably the two most informative shows that we ever had. I mean, these guys, there's nothing we threw at them about tobacco that these guys didn't ask. Um, so, yes, Jose is coming back on the uh, on the 15th, oh, and, uh, Bill. And Mike, Jackie wants to see you do some pole dancing. You want to see, Jackie, you don't want to see me doing no pole dancing, dear, really. <laughs> it, you, your eyes would fall out of your head in uh, disgust, trust me. I'm, I'm not that, that sexy. Even though my wife is nice and lies to me every day and tells me I'm a handsome man, which I appreciate, but uh, yeah, I'm not even close. Oh, she said no, you. She don't want me. See, they they all want all you, right, baby. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, look at all the people oh, dropping off. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> All right. Well, listen. Any, we got about five minutes left, uh, guys, and then we're going to uh, end our show here. And again, we want to say thanks to all the viewers uh, and some of the new ones that came in. Uh, we appreciate you stopping in. 
hope that you'll come back and join us. And uh, I think the beta test, except for Corey, went pretty good today yeah. with the uh, – what you guys think of the call-in show? Did you like it? I mean, are you, you like and, having that feature? You know, the, the thing is – for you know we're almost at the end of 2012 and for 2013 we're looking at you know this this call-in thing more and hopefully we'll get it set up where we won't even have to change the picture on the screen we can bring in a caller on another computer and, yeah. and shoot them right in you know through skype yeah uh now i'm not sure we might only have audio that way but you know it, it would be something yeah going down the road where you could just literally ask the manufacturer your question and talk to them directly without, you know, having to, to type it out in the chat or whatever. So hopefully that, that's yeah. something we're looking forward to. We're working on a lot of things, believe it or not. Uh, matter of fact, after the show, Matt, myself, and Mike are going to discuss. Uh, we're looking into doing a, a, monthly, uh, a monthly show uh, incorporated where we can give away cigars every month to a viewer but uh, you guys got to work for it we're going to smoke some blind cigars and we're trying to find some other ways to incorporate you the viewer into the show as well and make it fun and uh you know show you guys our appreciation as well for taking time out so uh any suggestions feel free to email them to uh any any one of us at stogie411.com uh you can send it to the stogie411 yep. at stogie411.com and all three of us will get it and uh, we'll be happy to uh, see what we can do. Joe, we appreciate you joining us for the first time for the entire show. Thank you so much. And Yeah, uh, Corey, we definitely do have to catch yeah. up again. I, I smoked a cigar with Corey before, and uh, we're not too far from each other. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's always fun meeting up with people locally, you know, and, and smoking cigars. And, you know, the other thing we're looking – I'm going to throw some things out here um, – the other thing we're looking forward yep. to, you know, like in the in the coming year is uh, possibly, you know, maybe going to an event and actually broadcasting yep. live yep. from the event. Broadcasting um, live. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We are looking into it. We yeah. definitely are looking and, into it. You know, that. The, the biggest the biggest problem we have right now and we've asked you before is just the time you know, when to do the show. And I always thought, I, I told my local shop even, I said about Thursday night shows or Thursday night uh, events. And I said, I, I just didn't like them because it, it's too hard, you know, people getting home from work, blah, blah, blah. And I, I posted on Twitter and, you know, the, the Twitter crowd basically said they actually love them because of the fact the weekends are, you know, with family, with relaxing, with, you know, not doing anything. Yep. They would rather do a show yep. or, you know, do an event during the week than on the weekend. Which surprised me. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it's just hard for us with schedules and, and everything else. Uh, IPCPR, yeah, that it that is. would be really cool to go and do a live show from IPCPR. But um, I think we're going to need a whole heck of a lot more sponsors. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Hey, Slider, thanks, man. We we really appreciate Slider 0303. We appreciate it, man. Thanks for joining us. We hope uh, to see yeah, you more often yeah. Next back show in the is chat Jose. room. So. And, uh, yeah, next show is Jose Blanco, December 15th. Uh, we, yeah, we, we may uh, – we're, we're looking into a lot of things. The thing is, is a lot of this takes time. Uh, a lot of it takes money. <laughs> and uh, we're looking to do some on-location uh, shows, possibly at some B&Ms in the future. We're looking at the cigar giveaway show. We're looking at the caller. Right now, we're focusing on the caller, the viewers calling in. That's that's the thing we're focusing on right now. But uh, we got a lot of ideas coming up. So hopefully, you guys will stick with us, and uh, hopefully, you know, you'll continue to enjoy what you what you hear and what you see. And and one quick note, I'm going to end it on because the show is just about over. Is just remember this: no matter what blog site you go to, and no matter what the person says about a cigar. Just remember, it is just an opinion. Smoke it for yourself and make your own choice. That's all I'm going to say to you. No matter if it's my site, Mike's site, anybody else's site, smoke it for yourself and take away from what we said from that cigar and make your own opinion before you totally wipe a cigar off. It's not fair to the manufacturers, trust me. And, yeah, you know, so, the, the you gotta, meetup for cigar smokers and, you know, for the fans of Stogie 401 would be really, really cool. But like you saw when we asked the questions, uh, I, I don't think we are going to be able to go to Australia. Uh, I don't <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, no. that's one thing, you know, that's another thing back to the blogger world where, you know, we, we have fans all over the world. And 
it's we hard do. to say, okay, well, we're going to do, we're going to have a, a meetup at this location. You know, even if it's only a four hour drive for somebody, that's still a four hour drive there and a four hour drive home just for, you know, smoking a cigar right. or two. And a lot of people don't want to do that. Uh, that's why we like this live thing. You know, we could have people, you know, you can come on the show, you know, maybe we'll do a show down the road where everybody will smoke the same cigar and talk about it. You know, we'll just have people coming in and just talking yeah. about the cigar with the manufacturer, you know, and telling, telling the manufacturer yep. directly what you think, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's it, like Mike said, there's a lot of ideas that we're floating around, a lot of ideas out there yet to do. And with a live show like this, yeah. it, it makes it a lot more, uh, interesting to do it than, than yep. something that's pre-recorded. So I agree. All right. Well, listen, guys and girls, if there's no more questions, we're going to end the show again. We want to give our thanks to everybody in the chat room. Thanks to everybody for calling in, uh, even Corey. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back December 15th, uh, our usual 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with none other than Mr. Jose Blanco himself. So hopefully you guys will have your questions ready. And uh, other than that, we'll see you guys then and uh, be safe and enjoy your smokes. Yep, and we'll, we'll see, see you soon. later and eagles suck. <laughs>